Hey, welcome to uh, Table Tennis Philosophy. Um, Going to talk about an uh, element of table tennis that is discussed a lot in clubs, uh, sort of roundabout ways, but it's about deception. Deception is part of table tennis in a sense, trying to uh, fool your opponent, uh, trick them in some manner. Um, I usually advise people when they're learning to serve that uh, deception is the least important of the things you should be going for. You're not trying to trick everybody, but rather try to set up your uh, style of play, get the kind of return that you would like as opposed to have the opponent be so fooled that they uh, don't return it at all, um, although it's great when that happens. but. Um, now, let me say this as somebody who has played with long pips, um, played with short pips, played with anti-spin, uh, played with all, all types of smooth rubber, and I'm currently using medium pips and um, on one side of my racket and hurricane on the other. Um, if you're going out and purchasing pips or anti-spin with the idea that it's going to be so deceptive that you're going to win a ton of points just because you got that rubber. Uh, you're probably uh, fooling yourself. Uh, that's what the uh, marketing of certain rubber is designed to make you think that this is gonna change your life. Um, some rubber is far more deceptive than others. The, the problem is if it, if hitting it is going to make it that difficult for your opponent, it's also going to make it difficult for you to use in some sense. And what happens, oddly enough, is you can get some really interesting long pips and they seem to work to some extent. And as you get better and better at, at controlling it, the ball actually goes back with a little less deception because you've had to figure out some way to get the ball to go over the net and you to control it, which means you're making little variations to your shot that make it not so uh, tricky for your opponent. The thing is, and I know some players hate playing against long pips in particular, or any pips, and uh, anti-spin uh, might be falling into that category as well, the, the truth is that if you're using long pips or some other kind of what's re referred to as junk rubber, it's, it's going to fool the lower level players. Yes, no question. It will drive the, uh, say, the USATT, I don't know, maybe 1,300 and down. Uh, they'll be, uh, be fooled quite a bit by it. Even up from that, people may complain about it because it doesn't send the ball back in a predictable manner. But long pips are not going to be as effective. They're certainly not going to fool uh, anybody who is a very experienced player, who has played against that type, who can read spin, who can adjust to changing speeds, which is mostly all players of intermediate level and up are going to be able to adjust to that. In fact, they may welcome you hitting the ball with long pips to slow the slow the ball down. So, should we not be using them at all? Um, no, that's certainly not the case. Like I said, I'm using some uh, uh, medium length pips right now, and the the idea is: Does it complement your game in some manner? Yes, it does change the spin, but if, it, if you're counting on it to just fool all your opponents, that's only going to work against your weakest opponents who you probably would be beating anyway. Um, it, can, it can cause some headaches for some players, and people do complain about it, but the truth is you've got to find something that you can handle, improve your game, don't just count on uh, different rubber to uh, break, take you up to the next level. It happens occasionally, or seems to happen occasionally, but in the long run, you've got to improve your game, which is going to come from training. So if your game is built around uh, using some sort of long pips or pips rubber, you want to build that into a game that is um, that you can be successful with. And so I'm not, by no means am I saying everybody should go out and just get smooth rubber and get rid of pips completely. Um, I 
I tend to play a, a bit better with some sort of pips rubber, but um, that's that's my game. That doesn't necessarily mean that's anybody else's game. Or uh, <laughs> you know, like I said, it, you you have to find the type of rubber that and the type of racket and the type of setup that complements exactly what you're trying to do. Which is going to mean that you're going to have to have some introspection and figure out what it is you are actually trying to do. And a coach can help with that. But um, in the long run, you want a racket that suits your type of game. And uh, there's a lot that goes into that, but uh, the bottom line is don't try to f go out and get a rubber because it appears like it's so deceptive it's gonna fool everybody. It may end up fooling you more than anybody else and uh, better players will certainly not have a trouble against it no matter how, how tricky it may seem. Anyway, uh, Appreciate your comments, um, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.